Hello, I'm uh, Dominique Azelmassieu, and uh, my colleagues and I would like to share some of the work happening in the WCC developer relation effort that I lead, and which might benefit you as a WCC member. First, one might ask why WCC, as a standard organization, has a structured developer relations effort. The reason is that no matter how good a specification uh, is, its impact as a standard arise from its actual adoption. And in the case of WCC standards, um, developers and designers are a key component of that adoption. WCC members and the broader committee invest significant resources in creating specifications. So it's absolutely critical to ensure that uh, these specifications match the needs that developers face every day. And once these uh, specifications get implemented, it makes good sense to ensure that the developers get the support they need to make good use of these specifications. So how WVC accomplished this? As you may know, WVC maintains and runs a number of open source tools designed to help developers assess how well their content follows the best practices defined in web specifications and to encourage the adoption of their guidelines and technologies, the Web Accessibility Initiative and the Internationalization Activity have long developed, maintained, and promoted articles, tutorials, and other materials to explain how to create quality content. In addition, WFC runs a large-scale online MOOC training program called WFCX. It has reached more than 1 million learners so far who have been able to learn from courses built and reviewed by the WFC community itself. More recently, the developer relations team have put a greater focus in bringing visibility to the early specification work done in WFC groups using social media. We are very active on WFC devs on Twitter and WFC official on YouTube. We want to get as many eyes on these proposals as early as possible with the goal of reducing the cases where specifications miss their target by addressing the wrong problems or addressing them the wrong way. We are also very actively involved in Mozilla's MDN web documentation portal, both through its product advisory board and through the recently launched Open Web Docs effort, with the goal of ensuring developers and designers benefit from the most accurate and up-to-date documentation when they use web technologies. And we are now also initiating a new program in this effort to create tighter feedback loops between groups and the developer community. Based on developer-friendly practices that have been occurring informally in some W3C groups, we have designed a developer advocate role for working groups with a few early volunteers from the W3C community, including Rachel Andrew, who's a well-known key contributor in the CSS working group at MDN and in quite a number of other places. Our goal in having a more structured approach with that role is to foster shared learning across groups, raise the level of responsiveness that developers can expect from W3C groups, and increase the visibility into developer pain points that W3C groups are receiving. Our first exploration in this program is looking at Stack Overflow, MDN web docs, GitHub issues, and social media as places to directly increase interaction with developers. The Developer Relations Community Group is being relaunched as the place where this program will grow. We're also counting on this program to help us make the W3C a more welcoming place for new participants, and in particular for folks coming from underrepresented communities, which is a theme that came out of the public breakout program which we ran during TPAC 2020 and that we hope to build on in TPAC 2021. It is also core to our ongoing discussions with the OpenJS Foundation on how to facilitate open source and open standardization cooperation. If you or your organization are interested in helping us make our shared work at the W3C more impactful, then help us spread the word by participating in our new Developer Advocate Program. Thanks for watching.